Hello and welcome back to Football and Next Money Ball. Coming today with another pick of the day for you. For today's pick, we have a 24 year old German winger. We're going to be looking at how, after breaking through to the first team in the Bundesliga 2 at 19, he's gone on to have a somewhat fractured career, but still managed to work his way through the ranks of German football, eventually landing at one of Europe's top clubs. Then this move resulted in limited game time last season, causing his progress to stall before being sent out on loan to another Bundesliga team this year where he started strongly with some impressive stats that could bode well for the index. And now he's actually managed to win the top PB mid on single match days on four occasions so far over the last two seasons, despite his limited opportunities. Then we're going to finish off with the usual profit target analysis, where there's a couple of really good alternate purchase options and some good comparisons for his current price, along with some good profit targets if he can continue his good early season form and challenge for the dividends this year. Before we get going, the usual reminder, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to be notified when the videos get posted, you can hit the bell icon. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, then you can just search at Index Moneyball. So the player I've gone for today is Marius Wolf on loan at Hertha Berlin from Borussia Dortmund. Marius is a 24 year old right winger. He can also play on the left wing or as a right back. He's actually quite similar to one of my past pick of the day recommendations, Valentino Lazaro, and he's actually been signed as a replacement for Lazaro really, as he's playing in the same role for Berlin this season. Wolf is currently priced at 56p, which in my eyes is a steal based on his early season form and his past PB wins. If we look at his 12 month graph, we can see that he was 40p this time a year ago, whilst with Dortmund, and he spent a lot of last season on the bench, so now he's back starting games regularly and with the growth of the index in that time, I think he's still pretty cheap. So I'm going to start off by taking a look at Marius's foot mob because there's a few interesting things to look at here. One of which is at 20, 24 years old, he's played for quite a lot of clubs. There's been a number of loans in there and when we look at the number of games he's been playing each season, apart from one season for Eintracht Frankfurt in 2017-18, he's pretty much been a bit part player in all the other seasons. But when he has played, he's, he's got some pretty good numbers. When he was... I guess 21 he got five goals and four assists in the Bundesliga 2 and then a couple of seasons ago he got five goals and eight assists for Eintracht Frankfurt before signing for Russia Dortmund where he got 10 appearances last season six from the bench and he got one goal so this season he started off and he's started every game so far for, since he signed for them I think which is six games and he got one goal and two assists and if we look at his figures for this year there's a couple of numbers that jump out to me as him being a good PB prospect and he's got 1.6 key passes per game 33 passes 3.7 dribbles which is really high and 1.1 shots and then if you mix in the clearances and interceptions and a few other things tackles he's got the makings of a decent PB player and as we've seen with Porto recently you don't need to win the PB to get the rises you just have to put your name in the mix repeatedly if people believe there's a chance, which there definitely is with Marius, he's proved that by winning it four different occasions, then his price should rise off the back of it. So one of the factors that's influenced me picking Marius over some of the other players that we're going to take a look at later is the fact that he's had such a fractured career. I think that his numbers might be slightly on the low side for what he's capable of. He's just started for Hertha Berlin and he's got one goal and two assists. So he's running at about 0.5 combined per 90 or just above actually. And I think that that might be closer to his real potential, if not more, having watched him a few times. So I'm hoping that that'll come out this season and that's the reason that I went for him over some of the others. So now I've just come over to Football Index Edge to take a quick look at Marius's master stats table info. And we can see here he's got 4p in match day dividends. And this is more impressive in my eyes because it was won as multiple 1p wins on single game days because it's it's been proven that certain players tend to win the, the, the dividends over and over again if they're suited well to the index and I think that's a good indicator his max match day score is 162 but that was on the old matrix and I do think that probably equates to 200 plus nowadays and you can see he's got 7% dividend return and he's at 100% of his price peak so he is going up since the start of the season a lot of people have noticed and I think anyone who's tracked him for a while, the f the reason I first became aware of him was Football Manager. He was very highly rated on one of the Football Managers a few years ago, and he became like a wonder player almost. And we can see that in September, he actually reached 47p last year. So he's only 9p above that right now. 
And if you look at similar aged players who are doing well in the Bundesliga or in any other league, really, there's there's lots of room to grow, as we're going to see on the profit target analysis. But he's got a number of high scores, 126, 153, 102. He, he, he's got some really good scores over the last few years when he has played. And the average is only at 60 per match day. But that can be influenced a lot by small substitute appearances. So yeah, there's, there's, there's been a number of 100 plus scores when I scrolled through his numbers. 149, that was one of his 1P wins. But anyway, that gives you an idea of the reasoning why I picked this player. Now moving on to the profit target analysis. This week with Marius being a young player, I had a lot more options to choose from. So I managed to get all players of the same age and position and I could have used a few more players but they were listed as forwards on the index. So I decided to rule them out as being classed as a forward is a pretty big advantage with the new matrix. But that is interesting because it's it's strange that some wingers are forwards and some wingers are midfielders on football index. And if Marius was to be moved to a forward in the future, that would be a positive for him on the current matrix. So for my comparable purchase options, I went for Adnan Yanazai at Real Sociedad and Samu Castileo at AC Milan. As you can see from the table, Yanazai is a penny cheaper and he has a pretty similar combined goal and assist record and Castileo is around 18% cheaper but with a worse goals and assist record. The main reason I went for Wolf is that the other two options have been struggling for game time a bit this season with with Yanazai competing with new signing and former pick of the day Porto and Castileo only managing 163 minutes so far this season for Milan. Also Wolf has made a solid start at Hertha with a goal and two assists so far in his six appearances all of which he started. For my low comparison, I went for Anwar El Ghazi at Aston Villa. Now El Ghazi could easily have been the purchase option instead of the low profit target for this video. He's currently 60p, which is about 8% more than Wolf. He's had a pretty solid start to the season with two goals and three assists in nine appearances so far for Villa. I think if anything, El Ghazi is pretty underpriced when we look at the two profit targets above. He has a better goal and assist record of 0.55, and it was really tough to choose between these two as who to base the video around, but for me entry price is always the most important thing and I just felt that Wolf's position in the team was more secure than El Ghazi's and that if he lost his place at Villa he might stagnate. But in reality I think I'm going to end up putting money into both of these players eventually, especially if El Ghazi was to stay at this price or to fall a little bit. Then for my mid price target I went for Gelson Martins at Monaco. Martins again has a slightly better combined goals and assist record of 0.5 per 90 but so far this season he hasn't started as well with one goal and one assist in 10 appearances. This is especially interesting when you look at Al Ghazi's price in comparison as you'd say on paper that he should be the higher priced also having the advantage of being based in England but I really think that both Wolf and Al Ghazi should be closer to this range and I'm confident that they'll both get there this season. Then for my high target I went for Leandro Tossard at Brighton. Trossard signed for Brighton for 14 million this summer and he's got the best combined goals and assist rate of the players that we've looked at of 0.6 per 90. But when you consider that he's played his whole career in the Belgian league up to this point, you could probably adjust that figure down a bit, which then makes his price of £1.23 look very high in comparison to Wolf and El Ghazi. Trossard just got called up for the Belgian national team before he got injured, but he hasn't actually played for them yet, so this shouldn't be too much of a factor in the price really. The other thing to consider is that with Wolf being on loan, I don't think Dortmund are going to keep him next season. They're probably putting him out there to basically put him in the shop where no for a transfer next year. So there's a chance he could get a move to England, which would be a big advantage. Then for the expected dividends, I chose not to include any for this analysis, as if you were to buy today, you would only have three IPD eligible fixtures for Wolf. I actually think it's pretty likely he's going to get an IPD in those games, but I'm happy to just assume the worst to be safe. So that leaves us with a profit target of 7% for the low, 48% for the mid, and 127% for the high. These are some really attractive figures, but the one that I'm looking for and that I'm fairly confident on is the mid target of 48%. I think that Wolf will keep progressing and establishing himself for Berlin, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was to have his best return in terms of goals and assists this season. If this was to happen, then I think he could come close to winning the dividends on a couple of occasions, which would help him get his name recognised similar to what we've seen with Porto in recent weeks. So I think he should easily eclipse Gelson Fernandez's price. And if things went really our way, then Wolf could even be pushing for a call up for the German national team, which would then be looking more towards the high target of Trossard. 
So overall, I think this is a great low risk, high reward scenario, which is exactly what I look for on the index. That's all we've got for you on today's pick. Again, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment and subscribe. Also, if you know someone else who might like the video, then sharing with them would really help me out. There are links in the description for signing up to Football Index and Football Index Edge if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out the other videos on the channel for more strategy videos and the other picks of the day. Most picks are long-term holds with depressed prices for some reason or other, so often the picks can still offer the same value, if not better, a few weeks after. And the research methods and reasoning can help if you're new to the index and want to learn to analyse your own players. Thanks for watching. Good luck on the index.